Welcome to the 2017 online appraisal seminar on highest and best use. This presentation is in the form of a video. There are a series of questions and answers, and it also has audio. Use the control section at the bottom of the page to pause, rewind, or fast forward the video as needed. Some slides have significant written information where pausing will be necessary to get the most out of the presentation. Try to answer the questions as it will help you to understand the concepts. Relax as it will not be graded, but there may be something that helps you uh, in your farmland preservation appraisal work. Thank you and good luck. First question. The farm you are appraising is a farm with significant improvements, which is not in the New Jersey Pinelands. Which of the statements below is most accurate regarding this appraisal assignment? You are appraising this property as though vacant. You are appraising the land component of an improved property. In some cases, the improvement may influence the highest and best use and or the value of the land. Or C, none of the above. The answer is B, you are appraising the land component of an improved property. Take a few seconds to read the above. Uh, the important concept here is that the improvements on the property can affect the highest and best use of the land. You are appraising a farm in a rural location, which generally has farms in low density, large residential lots. The town has recently zoned the subject property and the adjoining property is industrial. Agricultural uses can continue, but single-family residential subdivision is not permitted. You decide to use sales which have low-density residential subdivision potential similar to most farms in the area. You decide to do this with the following extraordinary assumption. There does not appear to be industrial demand, and therefore we believe agricultural use and low-density residential subdivision is eventually the highest and best use. Therefore, this valuation is based on the extraordinary assumption that a low density residential development variance will be granted in the future. If this does not happen, we reserve the right to amend our opinion of value. Is this an appropriate extraordinary assumption? The answer is no. Know that the SADC does not allow extraordinary assumptions in appraisals and that your value should include all risks inherent in a property. Appraising a 20-acre farm in the restricted after situation. It is located in an affluent community where buyers purchase farms and build large expensive homes, etc. Your subject has no home, but if restricted, it will have a two-acre non-several exception for a future home with no size limitation. Which of the following issues may pertain to this after valuation? Wealthy buyers will not be interested in this farm as it has too many restrictions. This farm may compete very well with large unrestricted sites in this town as a large home can be built on it. This may create a situation where the per acre value is much higher than the norm for a restricted farm. If small restricted farms in affluent communities are not available, the appraiser may consider using some unrestricted sales within the community if they have a similar buyer profile. Adjustments can be made for the formal deed restrictions associated with the subject property when unrestricted sales are used, or both B and C? The answer is D, both B and C. Be aware that you will not always find perfect comparable sales. Sales with limited utility may be useful in certain situations, such as the one described in the question. Take a few seconds to read over the uh, material. Thank you. You are appraising a 70-acre farm in a rural area with excellent cropland where there is minimal development pressure at this time. It is located in a zoning district where the standard minimum lot size is 5 acres and the minimum frontage is 250 feet. There is a clustering provision that requires a new interior street where the minimum lot size is 1 acre and the minimum frontage is 90 feet. Clustered subdivision lot yield is based on 1 per 5 acres. The subject property has 1,000 feet of frontage and otherwise good development and agricultural physical characteristics. While doing your due diligence, you find out that there have been no applications for clustered residential subdivisions in the entire town. 
you find that most residential subdivisions have been standard 5 acre plus lots farmettes on existing road frontage. What may be reasonable regarding this appraisal assignment? A. Clustered subdivisions on new interior streets may not be financially feasible at this time. B. If you calculate the potential lot yield based on clustered subdivision, you may want to tell the reader that this type of development has not taken place as yet. C. The clustering provision would be considered a negative to most buyers as it has not happened as yet. D. Buyers may consider the clustering provision a positive aspect of zoning, but the impact on price paid may be tempered by the fact that there is no demand at this time. E. Existing frontage may be important to some buyers as it represents current potential for subdivision. Or F. All of the above except C. Answer F. All of the above except C. Know that zoning does not necessarily represent the highest and best use. Take a few seconds and read over the material. You were appraising a farm in a fairly rural area of New Jersey where residential development was taking place from 2002 to 2007. The property you were appraising is located in a zoning district where standard lots are 3 acres with 250 feet of frontage. There is a clustering provision where lot size can be reduced to half an acre at a density of one lot per three acres. Up until 2007, new residential development was taking place on both new interior roadways and along existing roadways. The financial crash in 2007 created a situation where residential real estate values dropped and since that time, residential development basically stopped. There have been no major subdivisions built since 2007 with the use of interior streets in the subject area. Occasionally, individual single lots are subdivided on existing roadways, but it is rare. Also, some residential subdivisions approved prior to 2007 were never built out within the same community. What is the reasonable highest and best use based on this situation? A. Major residential subdivision with the use of interior streets in a cluster design as it will maximize the profit to the developer. B. Interim agricultural use with eventual residential subdivision and development as market conditions warrant. Answer is B. Agriculture or interim agriculture can be the highest and best use in unrestricted condition and adjustments can reflect that. You are appraising a 50-acre horse farm which recently sold for $1 million to an equine farmer who wants to live on the property and continue the horse farm use. You determined that it had adequate exposure to the marketplace and it was therefore an arm's length transaction. Sales of other equine operations support this price. The farm is located in a residential zoning district where there is residential development demand and farms in the area are being converted into residential subdivisions. The subject farm has many buildings, 12, fence paddocks, and a training track. You estimate that the residential developers would pay $15,000 per acre if it were vacant land and the demolition cost would be around $110,000. What is the highest and best use of the subject land for your before valuation? Demolition of the improvements and residential development to its maximum density or continued horse farm use? The answer is B, continued horse farm use. Again, the value of improvements can affect the underlying value of the land. In this case, agriculture is superior to residential development and the land should be valued accordingly. When considering the restricted or after value of a small farm farmette, is a dwelling opportunity an important part of the highest and best use? The answer is yes. The ability to reside on a preserved farm needs to be considered in the context of its market, but generally it is viewed as a positive if for nothing else but future marketability and versatility. This seminar dealt with some of the important issues related to highest and best use in these farmland preservation appraisals. We hope there was something that can help you in future assignments. Please remember to sign and send the attendance certification page for the required seminars and materials to get credit for this continuing education. Thanks again.